<laughs> Wrestling just does not stop, Andrew, and TNA was no exception this week. <laughs> Oh my goodness, hello all you beautiful Biconics wrestling nerds out there, and welcome to another rendition of the Takedown Troop Review, your weekly TNA wrestling review team. I am one of your hosts, Mikey El Jefe himself. Joining me this week is Mr. A to Z, Andrew. Unfortunately, we are down one co-host, our Papa Oso himself, Will, us unfortunately in the middle of premiering a play. <laughs> But he will be back next week, which is going to be weird because it's the go home show. But also by the time we record in this airs, sacrifice will also have happened as well. <laughs> Stay tuned for the review next Sunday. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be intense. It's going to be a good one. But we're going to talk a lot about sacrifice because TNA just like, oh, you wanted a twist. Hey, eh? bam. Here's the majority of the card that you're getting. We got a lot to talk about. But before we get into the TNA wrestling itself, a little bit of housekeeping get this out of the way now if you enjoy what we do here make sure you subscribe and check out the rest of the things we got going on on the Biconics youtube channel if you want to know why there's been a running gag right now across all the shows within the last week about rubbing things down you need to go check out the dynamite review we blame the professor for that one and we love him for it even more you can follow us all over the socials at bc WrestlePod. and if you can't watch our beautiful mugs you can take us on the go with you because we have audio versions of all our reviews now. It's such a great thing. Technology is great. So you can listen to us when you're studying for a test, while you're working the 9 to 5, as Dolly Parton would say, or if you're taking care of business on the porcelain throw. But I'm like 50% functional. I'm a little bit tired, so I'm going to be very punny and punch heavy today. It's going to be a good time. But then last but certainly not least, the boys of the Biconics are making their first live appearance. We are going to be at the New Jersey WrestleCon Saturday, May 18th and Sunday, May 19th in Middleton, New Jersey. It's going to be a great time. Come say hi to us. We're going to have a fun time. We're going to have some merch. We want to talk to some folks. And low-key, if we see Nyla Rose, we may ask her where she got her gear from because I still never got an answer back of where she got her outfit from that one promo. It was great. We love you, Nyla Rose. It's going to be a fun time for sure. But with all that out of the way. Oh, one more thing. If you want to see more exclusive stuff, you can drop a subscribe and a donation to the Patreon. You can also follow the link in the bio because now that we are ambassadors for next level two, it allows me to have PayPal. So we have PayPal and a Venmo and a cash app. So listen, we're literally trying to create funds around here because we want we love the content that we do. And we are always looking for more ways to improve on what we do. So any donation will help. Please. It's like college student fund, fund my project. All right. <laughs> now that that long winded is out of the way, Andrew, we got a lot to cover because uh, before we get into TNA, let's cover explosion, <laughs> which w is weird because it was like explosion airs on the weirdest times of the week. Because with all the wrestling that we cover here, I'm like, oh, yeah, I should probably watch that before TNA. Which then kind of sets up for what we get for TNA and then what's to come afterward. It's a whole plethora of weirdness. It's crazy. But if you want to say this week, because <laughs> the air dates for this are so far past than when we're recording this. But the explosion that we're talking about, you know, it aired on TNA Plus February 23rd and on YouTube February 27th. We got some fun matches. We got Mike Bailey versus Jay Vidal. It's nice to see Jay continue to wrestle post uh -huh. the breakup between Savannah Evans and the Shantaraj and Giselle Shaw. This match is what I thought it was going to be. Jay Vidal being Jay Vidal and then female Mike Bailey for the ultimate win. <laughs> I mean, do we expect any different? No, I mean... I, I basically for this, like Mike Bailey doesn't have bad matches and Jay Vidal is really good at getting beat up and wanting, like making you want to see him get beat up in a good way. I mean, for his, his character, he does it very well. Um, and I think Vidal is much better both physically and performance wise than he gets credit for. Uh, so I hope with this, like it is obviously we're seeing more from Mike Bailey. I'd like to see more from Jay too, because I think Jay actually is really skilled. 
Um, and he's a really funny comedic performer. Uh, so him and Mike Bailey were just super fun together. Um, and yeah, and of course it was fun seeing him get kicked multiple times by Bailey. <laughs> Those series of kicks are so much fun. And then he, Mike Bailey reminds me why I love him as a wrestler. Because after those series of kick, he went into a running shooting star. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like, Mike Bailey, gravity knows no bounds with you. Yeah. It, it was really, really fun. Of course, you know, Jay connects with the Slaymore kick. But then, you know, <laughs> Bailey kicks out, connects with Ultimate Weapon. Speedball Mike Bailey is your winner. As it should. At least he got a win because he's been on a losing streak. <laughs> you know, normally I don't like I don't mind wrestlers being on a losing streak, but hopefully with a certain somebody coming back to TNA after their excursion in Japan will help propel the storyline that we're gonna talk about when we get to the main episode yeah. of TNA along because I feel like we've been in limbo for the last couple of weeks. So the other match that happened on Explosion this week. Uh, we gotta talk about it all right i'm gonna let it be known that i do not hate the person behind the dirty dango character i hate the character of dirty dango to begin with you know it started out as a fun idea but it overstayed its welcome the second time it appeared on my screen but we get dirty dango versus laredo kid i did appreciate that laredo kid at the very beginning as he was getting ready to soar he was about to soar, but Bravo and Prudius like pull him down to safety. <laughs> I was just like, let the Luchador fly. How dare you? Yeah, this I, it was when you take away that stuff from it. This was a good match between yeah. uh, Dango and Laredo because um, Dango is really good. Um, but I feel like he's stuck in the middle of two different gimmicks or angles and they need to go one way or the other because the mashup is not working. Like, are they good at being bad guys or are they bad at being bad guys? Um, because throughout the match, they seemed like they weren't that good at it, but with the ending, they were good at it. So it's like, just pick one of those and go with it. It's going to enable you to develop more. Um, but yeah, I'd like to see something more comprehensive done with Dango because he is really good. I agree. The entering is never a question for me. Well, it's just that I'm hoping there ends up being some sort of depth and more from Dango and his posse too, because yeah. I mean, Bravo is always going to be Bravo. We, we took him from Johnny Swinger and we put him with Dirty Dango and then to have Prudius be there too. I was intrigued when we brought Kozlov, which is his WWE yeah. name, into this angle with this whole group. And then I'm just like, where what direction are we heading with these guys? Like I mean, but Dango picks up the win. And uh those are your matches on explosion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's not much to say. This is like the equivalent of like before we got the rebrand with impacts, like before the impact matches that would air yeah, prior yeah. to the actual episodes. I mean, it's still fantastic wrestling. I do mm -hmm. recommend you go check it out because you want we want to support the talent regardless if they're on the main show or on explosion because all the talent is very, quote unquote, talented. No mm -hmm. pun intended. But now that we've got the appetizer of the way, let's get into the main course. Let's get into this week's TNA episode, which, you know, opens up with somebody we saw on Explosion <laughs> because uh, our first match of the evening is Speedball Mike Bailey with British Daddy himself, Trent Seven, accompanying him. And uh, Speedball is here to take on Steve Macklin, who is being accompanied by the Rascals and Sexy Trey Miguel in the glasses once again. <laughs> There's a, I, just to yeah. clarify before we get into actual wrestling for those Biconics nerds out there if you can only see the things that go on in the group chat between the <laughs> TNA boys is out of control of how funny we are with here but now we're here for the wrestling I thought Mike Bailey almost killed himself a couple times <laughs> I'm like I can't watch but I kind of want to. this I, match was a lot of fun <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I thought it was 
like these two going against each other really showed how good that they could be. I so got this feeling from uh, Macklin and the Rascals when they came down. It just made me think of Scar and the Hyenas from uh, Lion King. I can't unsee it now. <laughs> but that's exactly right. You have Macklin, who is supposed to be the serious heel in this mm -hmm. case. And the Rascals are the Hyenas because they're just following around just being nerds. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> for Gutter's understanding of the understatement of the word, but oh my goodness, I, you know, on the right person, Steve Macklin's finisher looks devastating uh -huh. as all heck. And Mike, the way that he threw that finisher onto Speedball was like, I think somebody just died on my television screen. Yeah, it's so I mean, beautiful. Yeah, people who have the skills like Mike Bailey sell powerhouse wrestlers move so well this was just a fun match it was a little bit on the short side but it makes a lot of sense because i will say for all the matches we got i feel like the right amount of time was given to mm -hmm. it because literally it's like okay we're done with no surrender we got wait a minute we got two weeks until sacrifice <laughs> okay let's 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 put the let's put the fast track on let's fast forward to what we're gonna get because after the match, Steve Macklin and the Rascals are in the ring. Macklin cuts a promo. He basically says that he ran Nick Nemeth off, and that is the last we'll see of him. As soon as he said that, I was just like, oh, Steve, this is professional wrestling. When you say you ran somebody out for good, you know that's <laughs> never the case. And sure enough, we were proven right once again, because on the screen... <laughs> which i love that they filmed this when he you know with the new japan like yeah, yeah. press background <laughs> i was just like i know where this is i've seen this a lot of times but nick nemeth cuts this video pre-tape promo onto steve macklin yelling at him who's currently in the ring and says nick says that steve thought he got rid of him he's oh so wrong i've been around the world i did appreciate the crowd cheering once he raised the title i'm like that's right he's your global IWGP's champion. And literally, Nick Nemeth challenges Steve Macklin to a match at Sacrifice, and he'll bring that IWGP Global Championship to TNA. And, you know, coinciding with this, because I'm also going to give the social media announcements, because they announced these things as they happened as the episode was airing. Mm -hmm. We're getting Nick Nemeth versus Steve Macklin at Sacrifice. And it got later confirmed that it is going to be for the IWGP Global Championship. I'm just sitting here. I'm just like, the TNA, why you got to do this to me already? Yeah. Like, I was already excited for Moose versus Eric Young. And then you drop this match on me. I was just like, oh, if this is what we're getting at Sacrifice. I, I'm excited to see what you throw out for Rebellion. Yeah, I, I, one of the things I really liked about the match itself was that it was exciting, but it continued storylines, and the promo afterwards set it up perfectly. Uh, this is something that they've been pretty good at, even before they went back to TNA, was um, going like, oh, this person isn't here, but let's do some promos and things for them so we can make sure that their presence is still felt. So having uh, Nemeth cut that promo while he was in New Japan um, was super smart. Um yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see the two of them finally, like, throw down and go after each other and see how Speedball Mountain, Rascals, all that stuff's going to play into it. Oh, absolutely. And I'm going to be saying this a lot, so I'm going to repeat myself. I was just like, I'm excited for this match. And then mm -hmm. TNA was like, hold my beer, because <laughs> when we get to those things, I'm... they redeemed themselves after an okay episode last week. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It was crazy. So then we cut to earlier in the day, Frankie Kazarian is trying to enter the building. <laughs> a whole bunch of security guards aren't letting him in. And Gia Miller is pulling double duty because now she is literally the messenger <laughs> for Santino now. She fights her. I love watching her fight her way through the security guards. She's like super tiny. She's like, move, yeah. move, move. <laughs> it's, it's just a funny visual. But Gia informs Frankie that he has been suspended for, you know, beating down the ref and a bunch of other people at no surrender which by the way me and will discussed this and we knew frankie was going to be heel and that beatdown made up for the lackluster promo he yeah. gave us when he 
came out after he turned heel too. I'm like, see, you could have just did this from the beginning. We didn't need that promo to begin with. This is more effective to me and is great. And I love that Frankie continues his like attitude as a heel because he looks at Gia and he's like, oh, so we're sending messages now for Santina. Okay, well, I have a message for you to give to him. Are you sure this is the right idea? I'll be back. Don't worry. I'm like, all right, count to Monte Cristo. We'll see what happens. I'm like, this is going to, I'm like, oh, you're going to get yourself involved in Eric Young's match at Sacrifice, aren't you? I'm down for it, but I can see where this is going to miles away. Yeah, I, I what I hope is we get two weeks off. Well, it's I guess it's not two weeks off. For him, it was two weeks off um, from, uh, you know, episodes of TNA that we can kind of do a soft repackage of uh, King Kaz, as they were uh, calling him, uh, you know, in his last match. Um, so get something like that. Have him come in do something in the match and really set the precedent for who Kazarian is. Oh, absolutely. I'm not saying that the promo that he gave was like a big detriment to this. Cause I still like Frankie Kazarian, but it did start off in a weird way, but what happened at no surrender definitely made up for uh-huh. it. And I'm excited for this feud to continue. Hopefully this leads to some fun stuff at rebellion. But speaking of fun stuff, I really enjoyed this next match too. Laredo Kid versus Jake Something. All I wrote in my notes is love Laredo Kid. My gosh, Jake Something sit down power bomb outside the ring. I think someone broke a spine. Oh, that, that was brutal. Forget the into the void because I like that as a finisher for Jake too. But that sit down power bomb on outside of the ring to the floor. I'm just like it hurt me. I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, I was like, where's where's my rogue? It's like, where is my icy hot? I mean, that looked like it hurt both of them. I mean, that was Whoa. brutal. Even though it was a little bit like both of them, like kind of like pounced up a little bit after yeah. landing. I'm just like, oh, that ricochet recoil was not mm-hmm. that had to hurt. Yeah. Yeah. This match was short, but it was great. It was packed full of action. Um and I think what it was really fun at doing was starting, like, obviously Jake something's heading towards the X-Division title. This match let us see him face one-on-one against another X-Division-style wrestler, or what we normally see in the X-Division. Um, and so I think we're going to see more of that building up. Uh, obviously, we're not going to see him fight for the title at Sacrifice, which I'm glad because that'd be way too fast to turn around. I still think that Jake should be the one that dethrones Ali um, when he eventually leaves if he's not staying past his original agreement. Um, but yeah, this was brutal. And like, it's such a good move, like such a good choice to have Jake going after this title. I'm just happy to see that, you know, now that we're having Jake move towards the championship since mm-hmm. his return. And I'm super happy because I've been a big fan of Jake Mm -hmm. and to see the evolution of his character. Because remember, he played the dumb person when he was with Diener in them. And then he went on to be this massive monster, Mm -hmm. left to go wrestle on the independence for a little bit. I thought he murdered a couple people on the (laughs) independence scene. And now he is back. The reason I like Jake something is because he's like us. He's a huge nerd. Even mm-hmm. though he has to cover it up, he has a huge Dragon Ball Z tattoo on his leg. <laughs> and he's such a fun dude. But I'm super excited. It's I'm happy to see Jake finally go towards a title. Yeah. And what I love about the X Division Championship and the X Division in general, it doesn't matter. It's not necessarily all cruiserweights. Mm-hmm. It is no limits. So you can have someone who is like a typical cruiserweight, like... Ali or even Laredo Kid and Sabin, but then you can also have an X Division champion that looks like Jake, who is just massive mountain of a man. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm really excited for the direction we have. Something I kind of was excited for, and then by the end of this, I was like, this wasn't really produced very well. There was a couple of key things that kind of threw it off for me. We got our favorite talk show, <laughs> which is really the only talk show on <laughs> TNA, the sound check. And my first note is, my gosh, the size difference between Alan Angels and Khan. Oh, my goodness. I I chuckled at it, and I didn't mean to. I was like, oh, my gosh. The size difference is really noticeable. It's crazy how big Khan yeah. is. 
but we don't we don't even get like a full sound check segment because we start off the usual way we get an introduction angels tries to ask a question to Khan, but then the lights go off and in comes pco then the funniest thing ever happened we get the cutaways to the security guards who are just like oh my gosh what is this yeah and then i was cool with it i was rocking with it and then when we get to like the weird 10 50 minute second of what do we do next between angels con and pco pco is on the rampage and angel's like what are you doing man you need to not do this i'm like sir i was like why did we wait like 10 whole seconds before putting <laughs> our hands let pco know that he's gonna throw us off screen and then even when that happened con was looking at him like a deer in headlights trying to figure out what to do next i was like someone missed their cue <laughs> yeah i i will say i enjoyed the fact that when the lights went out and they came back up they were black and white and it had that like old style monster movie feel to it which was a kind of cool adjustment i still really like the sound check the fact that alan angels was talking to con and then like a few lines into it, someone comes to like clip a microphone on him and like, it's just, you know, it's like he is try. he thinks he's the being the most professional interviewer there is in professional wrestling. And it's like such, so haphazard, like student project style. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I think it was fun for what it was, but yeah, there was, there were some awkward moments in there. It was also weird when Alan angels first walked up and Colin was basically just, he felt like a normal guy for a minute because Alan Ainge just walked up and he was like, hey, how's it going? And I was like, like it's been a while, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, what? I was what? like, oh, Aren't yeah, I forgot y'all have history. Them to death? <laughs> as cheesy as it was, I love that we have this. I love that we have sound check because this is what I wanted. From Angels, all, you know, from when we got him back here in TNA, we we're just like, let's give him something to do outside of being cannon fodder for matches. And this is very hokey, but I love my hokiness in wrestling, which yeah. is great. So now we're going to talk about this one match where I did wish Will was here because I, he would have a field day and how much he enjoyed this match just because there's a singular person here that he loves dearly. That Look, if love. Joe. I'm just happy we finally got this match after building this since hard to kill, but we get our tag team match, Joe Hendry and Rich Juan taking on AJ Francis and Diener. This was pure perfection in my book. Just this is how comedy wrestling is such a fun thing because we don't even get the match starting like Diener and AJ Francis make their entrances. Rich Juan makes his entrance. Then Joe Hendry makes his entrance. And cuts this beautiful, hilarious promo before the match starts. And then even just through the match, Joe Hendry is always a star. Like when he had the crowd chant, I believe in Joe Hendry and did the yeah. chest chops to Diener. Yeah, it was hilarious. Yeah. This is this was just pure fun. <laughs> yeah, it was a really fun match. Uh I was waiting, like watching it i was waiting to see what rich swan was gonna do because for most of it swan and francis were never in the ring together like they never laid hands on each other so i was like all right if rich swan and aj francis never actually come to blows then rich swan is for sure gonna turn on uh, joe hendry at some point um i still think it might happen i'm hoping what this set up is the culmination of all of this of us getting aj francis versus uh Joe Hendry at uh, Sacrifice, uh, which could be where Rich Swan, you know, makes the turn. Um, but yeah, it, I, I think that match is going to be hilarious because overall, whether it's Mike skills, in-ring antics, or just actual technical skills, AJ Francis can't hang with Joe Hendry, but Joe Hendry will help push that up to where it's going to be uh, such a fun match. Joe Hendry has this innate ability with whoever he ends up feuding with. It ends up being the my favorite thing that TNA puts on for however long they do the feud. Lest we forget, I enjoyed his feud with Kenny King when he <laughs> did the stripper Kenny thing, which was hilarious. <laughs> Everything that he's been doing with AJ Francis has been fun. And even the unlikelihood, <coughs> even though I'm still personally not over it, for the little bit we got of Joya, like I didn't know that I wanted it, and Joe Hendry made it work so well. 
And even the mini feud he had with Simon Miller, too, yeah. leading into Turning Point all the way back in November. I'm just like, Joe Hendry is magic. And I feel like TNA is the only place where he can do this successfully and not have people try to tell him what he needs to do with all of it. Yeah. It's yeah. so I, good. I'm, I'm excited for Joe Hendry to be on TV every time. And this is... This is one of the good reasons to watch Explosion is yes. Joe Hendry has been on a couple episodes of Explosion, so some other really good performers, and it's like that gives us a chance to see two more matches that don't make it to Impact, and uh, I think, you know, it's it really gives us a chance to see them, and every time I see, like, I look at who's going to be on Explosion – there's oftentimes at least one of the matches where I'm like, well, I'm going to watch that, of course, because I wish that was on the weekly episode. So I think it's worth it. So at this point of the show, I was feeling great. I was feeling good. I was like, I'm having a good time. And then TNA decides to drop the holy bombshell of everything. And from this point on, they didn't, they snap their foot onto the gas pedal because they're like, Oh, we got two weeks. How do we want to let people know what's going to be on the card? We could let them know over a serious amount of time where we announce one match a day. No, they said, forget that. We're going to drop a whole bunch of matches within the last hour of the show. And we started off with something that I had no clue. I was like, I'm pretty sure there's probably some discussions, but I didn't imagine them to drop this bombshell. TNA drops their little placard saying that they have signed Alex Hammerstone to TNA. And I had to pause because I'm like, oh my gosh, they actually did it. They listened to us and they did it. I'm like, they signed one of the hottest free agents. <laughs> and he's in TNA now. And then they're just like, oh, you thought that was great. Well, how about at Sacrifice, we're going to get Josh Alexander and Alex Hammerstone round two. I'm just like. <sighs> Man. Josh Alexander's getting the Will Osprey treatment. He gets to fight mm -hmm. anybody and everyone. And I'm never going to be disappointed. <laughs> That's Holy how they're keeping crap. him out of the world title picture. They're just like, no, it's cool. We'll give you super matches. Super fights. Don't Holy worry. You don't crap. need a title. Andrew, not only did TNA pick up Hammerstone for the men's division, which is going to change a lot of the landscape, too, but we get another match between him and Josh Alexander. Yeah. You know how much I enjoy that match at Hard to Kill. Yeah. Holy crap. I think they're going to go even bigger this time, so. I, I'm going to say this now, but we can save for predictions next week, but I think Hammerstone should win this one, and then we get a... Mm -hmm rubber yes. match at rebellion or yeah give me a rubber match at rebellion 100 yeah, percent. let hammerstone win this it's his first match officially, officially yeah. yeah and like you said it sets up that trilogy match um and i think it lights another fire under josh because he's been on a bit of a tear and losing that match will kind of push him to another level so no i agree 100 percent. i love it and then Gia Miller is out here doing the work because then she's with Josh Alexander interviewing him <laughs> about, you know, basically what you said. He's been on a tear, but it's been official. It's hot off the presses. You're going to and not only did we sign Alex Hammerstone, Josh, but you are going to be facing him. What say you? You know, Josh talks about how he enjoyed the match with Hammerstone at Hard to Kill and he's excited to have him full time. But Hammerstone needs to be wary just because he's excited that doesn't change the fact that he's going to give it his all. Then Q, Dirty Dago, Oleg Prudius, and Alpha Bravo to come in to interrupt this promo. And they're advertising their wrestling school, which then prompts Josh to be like, bro, I was in the middle of the interview. You know what, Dango, let's fight next week. And we're getting a match between these two next week. So we were talking about Dango and Explosion and all that kind of stuff. I actually saw some stuff that I enjoyed here from Dango and his crew. And it was like, I think it was the lack of confidence. And I think that's where it is. Like, like when I was saying that I'm not sure if they're a comedic heel team or a, or an actual heel team, like an evil heel team, but 
the comedic aspect of this where Josh was like, you want to fight? And they're like, oh, oh, no, no, no. We only take students with a year less or, you know, a year or less experience. Um, go to the email address at the bottom of the screen. We'll get that right. That'll happen. And and he was just like, oh, no, I don't. I, no, I don't want to fight you, Josh. Like, it was just, it, there was something about that that I'm like, okay, lean into that go into that and commit to that if that's what you're gonna do because that could be really funny you took the words out of my mouth because i actually enjoyed this i was like oh my gosh we're giving him character depth this is what i wanted to see for the last few weeks (laughs) honestly i think it's gonna be a fun match next week and it does keep josh busy as you know we build towards sacrifice. I say build, but we're the pay per view <laughs> literally next week, and we just finished yeah. reviewing No Surrender not too long ago too. But it's gonna be a fun time, which the fun times kept going because I really enjoyed what we got next. We had the we had the State of the Union address from Mustafa mm. Ali. I love that the uh, good hands have become like <laughs> the entourage mm-hmm. slash like advisory team for Ali now. And His I'm just like what. His cabinet. <laughs> the good hands are, pun intended, are good hands to have on the TNA yeah. roster. They, I want their job. They get thrown into anything and everything, and they always have a good time with it. I was <laughs> like, this is so good. I love that they've become like these cult followers for Ali. You know, they do a little bit of speech. They introduce the our president of the X Division, Ali. Ali mm. cuts this very typical politician style promo and he's about to enact an executive order in which Chris Saban comes out. Chris Saban is still upset about everything. I mean, he punched a dude in the face, Andrew, like Chris Saban is on a whole nother level right now. And so he, he, Chris Saban interrupts. He basically says, Ali, you just like to talk, man, but you know, I'm a man of action. So how about we just, decide this right now and then Chris Saban just decides to beat anyone and everyone in that ring. The good hands you know beat down on Chris Saban and then Kushida and Kevin Knight come out for the save and this is where we, the social media decided oh you thought Josh Alexander and Alex Hammerstone was going to be crazy bam we're getting Chris Saban Kevin Knight and Kushida versus Ali in the good hands. I was like Good on the good hands for getting a pay-per-view match, man. I yeah. feel like it's well deserved. And yeah. this continues the storyline between the feud that Ali and Saban have gotten. But I love that it's not for the title quite yet. But it's yeah. just like, hey, we have beef with each other. And Kushida and Kevin Knight are Saban's boys. So everyone's gonna be fighting. This is gonna be a fantastic match. <laughs> yeah, I the the two things that I, I took away from this was um, stop trying to make us turn on Ali. Like, he's so over. Like, people were cheering for the him, chanting Ali, we trust. The crowd loves him. I yeah. love Ali. Yeah, and it was funny because you even listened to commentary and Matthew Raywalt, who's usually the, like, heel commentator, was on Ali's side and they kept trying to be like, oh, he's so underhanded, he's so this and everything. And I'm like, not from what we've seen. Like, he literally said he was going to come in and bring new life to this division because it needed leadership. Um, and he came in. He's doing that. He's got the fans cheering for him. Saban's the one that came in and interrupted and sucker punched him. Ali even stopped his security. Like, mind you, the good hands were holding him back. But, I mean, he did get attacked <laughs> by this guy who came in and interrupted. Um, and the fans are still cheering for him. The second thing was it was so funny to watch Saban and Knight in the ring destroying all that stuff. And they grabbed the like cork board or poster board that had the Ali and We Trust signs on it. And neither one of them could break it. They were like kept trying and they were like trying to tear it and it wouldn't break it. I was watching them. I was like, that's making you guys look even worse. Um, but yeah, this match is going to be awesome. The Good Hands have been on either Explosion or um, the weekly shows almost every week since they've both come back together, uh, whether it's like one of them wrestling and the other one being in the corner. So I think they've worked really hard at this. And this was such a good use for them because coming out of the whole, like being hired by, you know, being involved in the rascals, ABC, all that kind of and subculture and everything. 
this was a good like next position for them to take and they play such good henchmen um so i think this is a great role for them and ali is a good really strong figurehead to have be a, in charge of them absolutely i'm just happy to see ali be validated in the years of wrestling that he's been in this yeah. business and to finally be able to hold championship gold you cannot help but want to cheer for ali especially given with what we've seen of him in a previous company where he did everything. He tried to make everything they gave him work. Yeah. And we were robbed of what I thought was going to be a really good match between him and Dominic for the NXT. I still believe that Ali was supposed to be our next North American champion in NXT before they decided to let him go. I'm not bitter at it. still. <laughs> hey, we wouldn't have him as the X division champion right now if they didn't. So, Exactly, and we wouldn't have gotten probably my favorite match, my favorite match from No Surrender, which was mm -hmm. that X Division Championship match. Oh, yeah. And you know, Will, I finally forgive you, even though you poked fun at me, telling me that I knew this was your match of the night. Shut up, I know it was. It was mine <laughs> too, Will, so. Miss you. But then we kept it going because I love dumb moments like this. So we had yes. Ash by Elegance, yes. like Chevalier assistant, come out literally just to bring her to the stage. And then she's like, I will be in action next week. Bye. <laughs> yeah. I will say the biggest thing out of this is she needs to wrestle in those tights that she came out in. Yeah. That look, I was like, that is way, way slicker than what she came out and wrestled in before. Like Very that fair. style. She needs to do that. That looked so good on her. And I do. I love the character that they're working with her because she's getting to actually do like there's character work and story there and her you know voice um you know piece is like does such a good job introducing her. and he is just as committed to it as she is if not more so uh and i love the fact that he has a little bit of a lisp and so but her name is ash by elegance and it like it's it's in the end of elegance that's there and it's almost just it's like such a perfect fitting for like how he just announces into it um it's so good uh and i hope what we're getting is a slow build to eventually ash versus jordan at some point or i mean i'm assuming it's going to be jordan but whoever's going to be the knockout to world champion by the time she gets there absolutely and i'm super excited for it it's going to be a lot of fun. So from here, we cut backstage. Ali is a little upset of, you know, the ceremony not going as it plans. And he says that Saban, Kushida, and Knight ruined everything. And they will find out that every action has a consequence. Heck yeah. So I'm like, oh, Ali's getting to scary territory. I'm here for it. Yeah. An upset Ali actually frightens me. <laughs> well, because he's been so calm and... Of. Yeah, so exactly. Cool. Like, yeah. So I think I it'll, like, I think oh it'll be good. So I don't want to say this is the low point, but I'm not a fan of countouts. So, but honestly, I was okay with this one because of what we're getting. So this, well, originally what was going to be the rubber match between the Tasha Steels and Zaya Brookside, you know, trilogy that we've gotten mm -hmm. so far, which I've enjoyed. We literally come to find out the day before. I was like, by the way, this is now a number one contenders match. The winner of this will go on to face Jordan Grace with the Knockouts World Championship at Sacrifice. I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay. And then I, I'm like looking at this. I was like, see, it's weird because in my head, I was like, see, but now I kind of don't want either one to lose at this point. So mm -hmm. I would love to see Tasha versus Jordan, but I also want to see Zaya versus Jordan. I kid you not, Andrew. I was just like, Let's have them both win. They're not going to do it, <laughs> but let them both win. And sure enough, we got the count out in this match and both women are brawling on the floor still. And then they had to be torn apart. And then Jordan's just like, hold up. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Comes out on stage at the top of the ramp. She's like, I'm bad. I know I'm that girl. So how about this? I will fight both of you at sacrifice for this title. And then we get the announcement that it's going to be a triple threat for the knockouts world championship. At sacrifice, Jordan Grace defending her title against both Tasha Steeles and Zaya Brookside. I'm happy to see Tasha back on a pay-per-view, but I'm more excited to see Zaya 
like make her pay-per-view debut you know in a championship match of all things i'm like damn she is about to get this championship match and she's only 19 she's only been in the company for two months you go girl and it's funny because watching her wrestle tasha especially in this one Mm -hmm. she had moments of reminding me of billy starks um so you know it's a very similar things but the thing I really liked about this one was watching, seeing how much these like smaller knockouts um, could really go in the ring. Because we have so many powerhouse knockouts that we've seen over the past few years. Even, you know, Deanna Perrazzo, even though she was like a technical wrestler, she still was a strong woman, you know, I mean, like physically strong. And, um, you, you know, Mickey James, uh, Jordan Grace, Trinity. Um, but, uh, Zaya and Tasha have very similar builds, but the way that they went at each other was just brutal. Like that, uh, that uh, sli- uh, baseball slide drop kick uh, to the outside by uh, Brookside to Tasha was just insane. Um, so I really liked that, and honestly, I think this was the best choice um, for this because we haven't had a lot of build up to Jordan defending her title um, at Sacrifice because we literally just had a championship match like a week ago. Um, So I feel like this was the best choice and it gives us something interesting uh, and a little bit bigger in this knockouts championship match than we would have had if it had been just one of these two against her. Uh Uh-oh, absolutely. I'm really excited Normally, and we've said this before, like normally I don't like the pay-per-views that TNA slash Impact puts on like within two weeks of each other mm-hmm. because my biggest complaint is like we're not really building stories. Mm-hmm. I got to say, even though the stories have been kind of built in a very thin line, mm-hmm. I actually can't. I actually like the stories that we're getting, which means it's translating to the matches we're getting because, yeah, I'm excited for this triple threat. And then at this point, now we're into our main event and I'm looking at my time. I'm looking at the time on the episode. I was like, wow, this does not have felt like two hours. <laughs> we did have a promo from Rhino. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. I forgot to write that in my notes. <laughs> I like it was blink. a good one, too, because it I mean, it was an OK promo. But what it set up is cool. Look, as long as we get more crazy Steve on my television. <laughs> Like, I'm never going to complain. <laughs> Give me more crazy Steve. <laughs> yeah. And, then, you know, he's that digital media championship is actually being defended on television. So yes. I'm not going to complain. And, and I kind of like that it, like, I'm okay if it shows up more often on Explosion than it shows up on, you know, the weekly shows because I mean, it's it a digital, digital media m- champion. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like their TV title, basically. Um, so, yeah, I mean, have it be there if it means we're going to get to see it every week or every few weeks or whatever. I'm excited for that match. Anytime. Again, more crazy Steve on my television is always a good thing. <laughs> so now we get to our main event, which cool. Like, as soon as I saw who was fighting, I'm like, OK, the system makes sense. Mm-hmm. Moose, Eddie Edwards, Brian Myers. I look at the opposite end of the wing. Eric Young, okay, totally makes sense. That ABC, what are they doing? What? <laughs> so, it is the system: Moose, Brian Myers, and Eddie Edwards taking on the team of Eric Young and our tag, our knock, our TNA. I almost said knockout. Our TNA tag team champions, ABC. Which I thought this was a fun match as well. Mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of critique online because people are complaining that you had one half of your tag team champs be pinned in this match. But then I'm sitting here. I'm like, okay, normally I don't like champions being pinned in non-title matches, but I didn't mind it for this one. Honestly, I mean, granted that ABC just barely survived the trilogy that they had with GYV, in the best of three series, which was so fantastic. By the way, it was such a good three match series. I don't mind the fact that the only reason that the ABC and Eric Young lost is because Alicia Edwards came in with the shenanigans. And so, yeah.
Right. And then our final match announcement so far for this episode, we're going to get a TNA Tag Team Championship match between ABC and the system. So I would not be I would not be surprised if the system picks up the title set sacrifice. It's a, except for one, Alicia. I love Alicia. I really do. So I don't want to like not be the I don't want to be this way, but she's not beating Jordan Grace without shenanigans. There's no way. That's very fair. The last time she wrestled was against uh, Trinity at Victory Road back in September. So that was the last time we saw her in in-ring competition like that. All right, but we made it to the end of this week's TNA, Andrew. So last thing we got to do before we sign off is uh, what do we rate this episode? Absolutely. I'm going to go with you. I'm going to give this like a solid 8.5 for me. I thought this was a fantastic episode as well. I really enjoyed it. And I'm liking that even with the quick turnaround between pay-per-views, we're still building up, you know, how we got here, why we got here. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. We still have yet to have like our knockouts tag team championship match. If that's going to happen at sacrifice, there's a few other matches we can have there. I'm just super excited. This is going to be a fun ride and I'm excited to cover the go home show when all with all three of us together next week. So it's going to be a fun one, but me and Andrew are going to get on out of here, but until the next week's review, remember, take care of yourself, love one another. And as always stay biconic, you beautiful guys, gals, non-binary pals, he, she, they's and gays of the internet. We will see you next week, but until then, hot tough for now. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Vibe Tribe production. What's going to happen next time? Well, you're going to have to tune in to find out. But until then, remember, take care of yourself, love one another, and as always, make sure that you keep the good times rolling. Thank you for being here, and we'll see you next time.